JavaScript is known for a lot of confusion. Whenever you write the code, a lot of people complain, and you might be uh, hearing this quite a lot, a lot of people complain that I'm not able to understand how JavaScript actually is running my code. It behaves really odd. It's not behaving odd. It's like we don't really focus on this keyword exactly, which is context. Once you understand how the global context works in JavaScript, then it becomes much more a second nature to understand that how the code is gonna behave. And all the confusion regarding this is gonna go away. We're gonna divide these videos into multiple parts so that we can focus on one topic at a time and can give you more of a clear approach in how things are executing step by step. So we will be coming back onto browser because executing this code in the browser is the most necessary thing to understand the behavior of JavaScript. So let me go back first here in the file and we are on to the third uh, file into this third intermediate folder, which is JS context. Okay. So the first thing that is going to make you a bit confusing is going to be, let's just say I declare a function. We'll keep it absolutely basics to say hello. And this is not going to do much, but just we are going to say hello. Okay, this is fine. You have seen this so many times. There is nothing to be confused about this. And I can go ahead and say, say hello, which is going to just execute this one. So let's just say I'm going to go into 03, 03, and it says hello. No big deal. But what confuses a lot of people who are coming up from the background of C, even C++, that how the next thing that I'm about to do is happening. So I'm going to cut this out, and I'm going to put it at the very top. So when I run this code, some of you might be expecting this is going to give us an error, but that's not the case. It actually runs it very fine. So how come JavaScript came to know that I do have this function when I'm using this function at the very top and I'm, I have no, no interaction here that how you came to know about this function that was declared after and usage was at the top. Now this all is about the global context of JavaScript. And in order to understand that how this global context work, and especially the later on keywords we're going to discuss like this, window.stuff, this is very important. So I'm going to go ahead and comment this out. Oops, comment this out so that you can have these as an exercise file. Let's go ahead and try to understand this and the roles that how you write the code and where actually it works and where it doesn't really work. Let's go ahead and try out some of the if and else statements. So if I just say two is actually equals to two, that means I'm checking the type as well as the value as well. So I'm going to go ahead and simply get a log and I'm going to say this is true. So anything that evaluates to as a true condition, I'm going to get a message of true. And in this case, it's pretty obvious that they, we are going to get a true. And to remind you from the previous video, this is not going to get a true statement because this is not a true statement. This is a string and this is a number, two very, very different things. Okay. Now, similar to this, there is a global object inside the JavaScript which executes a whole lot of things. In order to understand this, we now have to go back onto the browser and try to just run all the code in here. Don't worry, you will be able to see all of it. I'm going to just open up the inspect, visit any website and just inspect and go into the console. This is what we want to have here. Now, okay, moving on the exact same thing, let's just say I have a variable which I'm going to call this one as, let's just call it as my name. And my name is going to have the value of Hitesh. Okay, there we go. No big deal. And uh, I forgot uh, this one. So there we go. So there we go. And now if I try to just have this my name, I can see that it produces my value. I don't need to do console log because I'm already into the console. Now notice this syntax very, very carefully. I'm going to expand this a little bit here so that we see all of it clearly. I'm going to use a keyword again, if, and now if I just say that this value, my name is actually equals to my name, I should be able to grab a simple console log here. So I'm going to say console dot log dot log. And inside here, I'm going to say a true statement. And again, I messed up with the codes. That's why I don't like to work in the console log. It's not really good. Okay, so what do you think when I run this, what is going to be the expected output in this case? And you might be saying, yeah, that's pretty obvious because I'm comparing my name with my name. So that is absolutely true. It's almost exactly like comparing two with the two, the number ones. 
So there we go, we get the true statement. But what surprises a lot of people is I can do also something like this. My name is going to be equal to window dot my name. And when I run this, this also gives me a true statement. And this brings again to the thing which is known as context. JavaScript has a bigger context in which everything resides. And that context in this case is window. So this is a context in case when the code is running in the browser, which is majority of the cases. But if I go back and try to come and run the same code here, if I just say, uh, first and foremost, let's just say exact same name. And I try to get my name here. And if I try to say, if my name is actually equals to my name, I'm going to go ahead and simply say log. This is again, a true statement. There we go. What do you think now is going to happen? Let's go ahead and run this one. And it says this is again a true statement. Fair, fairly a good assumption. But if I go ahead and try to do this one here, which is window dot my name, this is going to give us an error. Let me go ahead and show you that as well. Now notice it says a window is not defined. Now since the entire code that we are writing here, is being executed by node, the global context is not available. The global context actually differs a little bit when you execute the code in the node while you execute your code in the browser. But still, there is always a global context. We don't call it as a window.name here, but there is always the concept in the JavaScript engine that there needs to be a context. And that context is actually responsible that all of the things are registered inside that context so that once the functions is being once the function is being registered, then that function is wrapped up and put inside a global context. So whenever you need that, when the code executes, it is aware of those functions. And that is the reason why this doesn't give us an error because of the global context. Again, most important thing is just make sure you understand that we call this context different in different engines. In the node, we don't call it as window, but when we move it up here on the browser, this is always going to be called as window. And that is why later on, you're going to realize that when we access these local storage and all these things, which are browser specific properties, we check that whether this window object is available to us or not. Again, this is a really, really advanced thing. I'm going ahead of myself, but just wanted to give you the point that there is something known as context, which is usually a global context available to us in the browser as well as in the world of node, but it can be having, it can have a different name, but it is there, it is there. And that is why this confuses you a lot that how this is actually possible. I know this is a bit of an advanced video of trying to explain you behind the scenes of JavaScript, which can be really confusing, but just whole story summarize a short, yes, this is the above thing is totally possible. Why this happens because of the global context and it's not really necessary that you always call this as window. So that's all for this video. And we're going to continue this talk about the context a little bit more further so that clarity is there in the JavaScript. And you don't say that it's a bit odd language. Okay, quite a lot. Have you hit that subscribe button yet? I think yes. No? Yes. Okay, that's it for this one. And let's catch up in next one.